Okay, hello. Um, it's Jack here. Welcome to my interview with John. Um, John, do you want to introduce yourself, say who you are and what you've done? Hi, yeah, my name is John and I'm a, I've am been a professional musician for many years. A little bit of a recording side and mainly live and the live performances. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, um, yeah, so um, I know that you were in a Beatles production. Um, was it Let It Be? It was, yes. Yeah, I actually saw that um, back in like 2016. Yeah, it was so good. I really, really loved it. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Um, what was the sort of um, the process of it all from sort of start to finish? Uh, that began in 2012 at the Prince of Wales Theatre in London. Okay. I don't know where, where I, um, and they, uh, they uh, auditioned around the country, apparently. So. I think there's about two, two, two and a half thousand people, they say. So they went to London and Manchester, all the major cities and auditioned. I got in the production. I had the producer, I'd actually, the producer knew of me before that from working in the States. Okay. The production with symphony orchestras. So I was um, going on the world with playing as a guest of symphony orchestra. So they knew of me from that. So they wrote to me and said, I'd be interested in doing that beat. So I'm lucky right, enough, I okay. sort of bypassed audition process which is lucky for me yeah yeah for sure so were you the, the were you the first uh sort of george then or was there one before you i was the day uh because because the schedule was eight shows a week which is a lot of shows to do um right. they had to cast so there was initial cast was six so i was in the original eight cast it but we shared the role so we did four shows each a week oh okay fantastic yeah oh, that's so, interesting that's so, a lot of singing I think more um, unlike a lot of musicals, you know, those Beatle tunes is we do I think we're doing near 40 songs. Yeah. So, so to sing that two shows on a Wednesday and two on a Saturday plus the other six so they it's been exhausting. Uh, <laughs> very yeah, particularly for the the guys doing Lennon McCartney who had the bulk of the singing to do. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. So I was wondering sort of what the maybe the 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 um I guess the practicing, because obviously you're, it's not just making the music, it was sort of, you're playing a role as well. So what was, what sort of went into that? How hard was that? Yeah, that's, that was a different aspect than the, than just the music. Yeah. And I think they had to find, they couldn't get actors who played instruments, they needed musicians because it's quite demanding to pull off those songs, some of them, you know, uh, to that degree. So, yeah, so they, um, I'd, well, I'd already done it with this orchestra show, so we were we were doing a few shows, but one of them was the music of the Beatles, so and that was very exacting. So I'd already, but that was just the music. So I'd already knew the music, um, and then uh, I guess we they we uh, they got us a dialogue coach, and they uh, and we they gave us breakdowns of the music, and you know we had some training. I then looked a lot of videos of the original live shows. Right. Okay. I think a little bit of body language and a little bit of, you know, just to get the flavour of it. Yeah, because there's definitely like um, nuances each of them have. So I was, yeah, there's definitely must have been a lot to go into that, sort of making sure the voices and, and the sort of nuances were, were sort of spot on. Yeah, and it helps if you naturally have that, if you naturally like that, you know. Luckily, the, none, none, of, none of the Beatles were, were you know, they weren't like... Uh, Van Halen or something, so you didn't, so, and entertained back then, so it wasn't a, too much of a stretch for most people to pull off, you know, reasonably yeah. those roles. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what was the sort of highlight of that whole experience for you? Of that whole experience? Um, I guess being on the West End, and uh, then in 2013, we, uh, like, uh, we went over to Broadway to, Bor Boris went over to Broadway to start that production there too, so, so that was a highlight to, um, and just uh, to, to do that scale of show, there's a lot of money went into it and the, the sets and the lighting and stuff like that. So that was there, yeah, that was a fun experience, plus the audiences. You know, just to yeah, definitely. People a week. And yeah, I great. imagine that it's sort of doing something like that is quite, quite immersive for an audience where it's sort of, you know, yeah. they sort of get lost in that whole environment and they sort exactly. of see you as, as, as them. Yeah, because I'd always worked in, well, Previous to that, I was working, you know, I started in like pubs and clubs when I was younger and, and then doing original stuff and, and working in, I worked a little bit in America for doing, you know, these big venues, just rock venues, you know, like 2,000 people or something. And it's just, you know, 
there's there's your mosh pit in front of you. So to to jump into a theatre and have people sitting in the seats staring at you and uh, it, I I actually enjoyed it because you can see them emotional. You could see them that so it was the music was repetitive to play that many shows over a couple of years. You know, mm. and I often get asked that do you get bored playing the music? And I'd say mm. not really because you'd find ways to make it fresh. Um, mm. even what you played, you could change the way you played it. But I was just seeing a different audience every night, especially the first ten rows. You'd see them and it was the emotional content made it interesting and it made you work hard because you knew that it was for them which yeah. is a different, like a different shift from what I was used to where you played say this is look what I can do yeah definitely so, yeah yeah suddenly for me it was like what experience can we I want to make them have the best experience possible so it was a massive shift to go to theaters mm. yeah definitely um yeah because so I I play in obviously it's a tribute band so it's a bit different to what you would do um, but what I do is Arctic Monkeys. So it's sort of like oh, wow. the same sort of thing where it's, you know, we sort of try to get that immersion going. So I was wondering, sort of maybe what, if you had any advice for, I don't know, it's a band a bit different, but, you know, how, how to sort of branch yourselves out, get ready, sort of prepare yourselves to be on that sort of stage. Uh, in terms of like, prefer, uh, in terms of performing or in terms of the yeah, business? Yeah, in terms of sort of performing, getting out there, being on the stage in front of people. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, if I mean you're Arctic, you're obviously into the Arctic Monkeys, right? You love the, if I think if you love the music, it helps. Yeah, and you love you know, the band you're doing and doing, and I guess the made it have fun with it. You know, do it do it well, and then and yeah, and give people joy. You know, I think that's it's it's about you satisfy yourself and and get a lot out of it and get a lot of things. But then you know you're giving people a, you know. A lot of joy. I think it helps. I think it, that that's a dual purpose. That you know, it 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 works for everyone. Yeah, definitely. that attitude. I think it, it makes it go a long way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've I've already seen that. Sort of, you if you're if you're playing for people that love the music, there's a, there's a different sort of reaction to if you're just playing yeah. a set of completely different songs from different bands. Um, so there's definitely that. Um, so the interesting dynamic between a between a performer and an audience at the yeah. boys or or as that that. It, it takes both. You can't do it on your own. You need so you know you get something back. You give you know, the environment because it's a very interesting dynamic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. It's, it's quite unique. It's sort of hard to sort of explain it because I do, yeah, yeah. some sort of the uh, just the songs from other bands, but then to sort of say sell yourself as Arctic Monkeys or you know these it must have a completely different sort of dynamic to that audience. Um. So sort of um. You were talking about. Um, working for um, sort of performing as a guest for some orchestras, was it? Um, yes. So tell me yeah. about that. Tell me about that. Was um, basically I got asked to join it in the production in the states, and that was that, that was a that was another interesting um, place to move, uh, industry to move into, I guess, because everything's very proper and everything's very exact, and um, and and we did with orchestras all around the world, but I did a lot in America, and they. They're heavily unionized and you know, even the rehearsals, you know, if, if if you run out of time, they'll just get up and walk out. So it's just, I mean, it's very precise. So, so and and it was demanding musically because in, we were playing and singing in you know in front of you know some of the best players in best classical players in, in whether Philadelphia or New York or so. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure. Right. Anyway, but it was, it was fabulous though, you know, sometimes it was probably in a 90 piece Philharmonic. So um to, to just to hear that you know sometimes the, the hairs on the back of my neck would stand up just from the, how beautiful it sounded so so that was incredible and it did about four or five years and that was an incredible experience oh fantastic I worked with so of, many great musicians what sort of music was it classical music or was, was it sort of no that was pops doing pops but okay. the most popular show we did of those was the music of the beatles which is how i got end up getting into the I see. So, so that was the most popular one i guess you know and there was a big crossover because a lot of the later Beatles songs had orchestra, orchestration on them. So. Yeah, right. So that okay. was the popular. That's really interesting. Well, um, yeah. what, was, what was maybe sort of, I imagine you sort of had favourite songs that sort of would change throughout, you know, <laughs> what, what was sort of, maybe what was the favourite one if you had to choose one that you performed? Oh, one. That's so hard. And, and it, you're right, it would change over time. Yeah. And, and it depends. Yeah, um, I uh, I guess I uh, I don't know. 
Oh, it's hard to say. <laughs> sometimes come together. Sometimes it was, you know, Wamagata gently weeps because I got a lot to play on that. And uh, sometimes uh, it varied a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I really liked the, the, um, where was it, you, you played while my guitar and then um, it's sort of like Paul would join and start another song and then John joins and start another song. Am I remembering uh, it? Really? We, we, the, ch the show changed a lot over the years. So we yeah. changed up the show. So what, that was, well, I think that song was, it was, uh, and the producers came up with that concept. It was half acoustic, half electric. So right. we get that little acoustic set and we'd sit down and I remember we'd sit down in the second half and do a few, like songs on acoustic guitar. So, mm. and so while my guitar gently weeps, we merged two versions of that. So the first half of it was acoustic, mm. and then the second half electric and make it bigger, like the record. Right. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what have you sort of been up to over, over your lockdown? Over lockdown? Mm, uh, <laughs> no performance because I was. Uh, I was uh, in the middle of a European tour with a different production um, and we started in January and then by early March we all got sent home. Uh, so that was, so after the shock of that, thinking it was be a few weeks and we'd go back and I left all my stuff there, I left all my guitar thing in Germany, I think, so, which is still there. So, um, and that's a year later. So, um, so I, I was after that and sort of dealing with all my income and things, which is difficult for most Art and musicians and artists too. Um, uh, I went. I, I, I guess it's a chance to go back and do some writing. So um, I've got uh, the most of an album together and just done um, at home, just waiting for some some friends to add some bits and pieces to it. So so it's been uh, so it's been a, you know not been a bad time. Yeah, uh, this has sort of been productive. That sounds a bit. Well, that's same for you. What did you do? I mean, if you were you can't you, last year, you haven't been able to do any gigs or. Oh, I've no, nothing. Um, we managed to squeeze sort of two in when we had the sort of slot between oh, okay. um, in the summer. December, yeah, we got two in, but nothing, nothing oh, since. It's terrible. That's that's yeah, that's depressing, isn't it? Really? Yeah. What, is there anything you guys could do not touring, or could you do um, not online? Or? Well, we we sort of hoped so, but um, I guess it was quite difficult getting the practice in. With the police, we sort of practice that closed, but they're, they're open now, so we're hoping that something comes oh, good. soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's, I, I just kind of imagine what it's like. I, I, I actually, on the side, I do a little bit of, um, well, a bit of engineering and producing on the side, you know, so I did do a little bit of work for just a little bit of work for there's an acting school called the Central, you know, Central Speech of uh, Central School of Speech and Drama, the, the acting college. I think so that, yeah. Yeah. So when a friend of mine is a teacher there, so he did some teaching. So I did some recording of voiceovers for them and stuff. And we did that, you know, the last couple of years and stuff. But I, I just feel for for people coming out of college, you know, especially the performing arts and the, or yeah. the musician or an actor, and you just what's there for them? Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, at the moment, there's grapes. Well, because what year? What what are your year? Are you in your final year now? Second year. Second year, right? Yeah, so I suppose we're sort of lucky where there's that, we maybe have that year where industry can maybe pick up. Yeah, because if you were if you were coming out into the workforce last July, I mean, it's a bit bleak, wasn't it? But yeah, I, well, we, we were looking for sort of placements, obviously between sort of second and third um, year, there's just absolutely nothing. Right, we're a bit, yeah. Yeah, but well, well, hopefully by the time you graduate, there'll be a... Fingers crossed, yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. Over. Yeah, hopefully. There's like a light at the end of the tunnel now, at least. Yeah, yeah. So are you still practicing every day? Do you play every day? Yeah, um, we've got practice every Sunday. So tonight we're practicing, which is good. Um, and then, yeah, trying to sort of squeeze in as best we can sort of throughout uni work and that. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. You, you've got to... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not the priority at the moment, or is it? <laughs> well, I wish it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what are you hoping to do with that? When, when, when this is you know, lockdowns and stuff, you did you have an agent or a thing? We're trying to get onto festivals. Or? No, we don't. We don't have an agent. We um, we'd signed up with one at the start of lockdown. Mm. Obviously, hoping that it would be you know two weeks. And then uh, this guy was just sort of starting out himself, and then he just sort of ended up cancelling on us. So we we don't have anything yet. Um, 
but there's a big there's a big festival we've been invited to in Middlesbrough next year. Mm. The sort of all tribute acts and stuff. So we're right. sort of looking forward to that. Okay. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe what sort of what's what's next for you? What's sort of your future looking like? Um, I uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, things happen here, isn't it? I mean, that this uh, the, the tour ahead that was cancelled last year is it keeps getting postponed. So at, at, uh, so it was for April, but now it's gone. So it's looking next January. Uh, it should be safe by then, I'd imagine. That Hopefully, I'll, yeah. I'll probably go on as a European tour. So I'll probably go on a European tour with the production next next year, and then after that, I'm not sure. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. something to look forward to, at least. Hopefully, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I suppose one final question that we've we've sort of asked everyone that we've interviewed um, for this festival. Um, we're curious to know what your meal deal choice is. If you go to the Tesco's or Sainsbury's, what what do you pick up? My meal, my favorite meal choice. Meal deal, like a sandwich, drink, um, pre-show or in general. Just in general. Does it change general. pre-show? Sorry. Does it change if it's pre-show? Uh yes, it does. Oh, well, not not drastic. Uh, it depends <laughs> where I am. If uh, when I was in town, I'm a I, I before a show would be sushi for me. I love okay. sushi. But I think I did that four shows when I was in town for years. Um, uh, it was my probably favorite would be a pret, okay, pret sandwich, a pret sandwich. Uh, I forget the one it is. It's greens. I'm vegetarian, so that's uh, okay. That's a lot that, of that and a bag of crisps, really, I guess. Or if I, if it was Tesco or something, then it it could possibly be a bread roll and banana. Which is weird. Uh, yeah, that's an odd, odd combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so it yeah. Depends, where I am, depends where I am and what I feel like. Yeah, yeah that's it. it changes. If, 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 it, if it's Switzerland, which everything is ridiculously expensive, like three times the price of here, then it'd be probably, uh, I think I did, I'd get like a falafel or something. Mm. Oh, that's the nice. cheapest thing you can get. There. It's crazy in Switzerland. What's about 50 quid? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for taking oh, time. Uh, Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to thank be you. part of yeah, Thank oh, you. Really okay. do appreciate it. Um, Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you as well. I hope it all works out and goes ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Speak to you soon. I'll come see the band as soon as I can. <laughs> yeah, definitely.